Hi right, everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Valorant in 2025 with the new engine Unreal Engine 5. So we're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Nvidia or Radiant Barrender and at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for Valorant, uh, let's go to the Valorant section. You don't have anything that you can force honestly with the NVIDIA app and DLSS is not compatible. So you can't force any DLSS file. So my recommendation in global setting, normally I sh you should use your low latency mode here at on. I also like to lock my FPS 3 FPS less than the maximum refresh rate of my monitor. So in my case, I have a 240 Hertz monitor. So that's why I'm looking at 237 because I always want to stay in my G-Sync range. I don't want to lose it. So for example, if I'm running 241 FPS, I will not have G-Sync anymore on my monitor. So you can have tiering and stuff like that. So super important to do that. Shader cache, if you install a lot of game, that this one can be tricky. You real you always need to rebuild your shader cache. Uh, but because by default it's using the 5 gig, and I install a lot of different games. So if you have the space, go with 100 gig. If not, just go with 10 gig. It will help a little bit. Less stuttering, uh, sometimes uh, less also corruption for your shader cache because you're always like rebuilding them. So that can be good. For the G-Sync, if you want to use it, make sure this one is at on. I like to use the full screen and window mode. I bind it on my main monitor. Also super important, normally you have a power render on your monitor, so you need to activate your G-Sync over there. Uh, after that, really important your refresh rate. Make sure this one is at maximum. I know a lot of people, they are buying an high refresh rate monitor. They just plug it in. Windows by default put 60 Hertz and they don't even know. So super important to do that and make sure that you're playing native. For the color section, if you have a good monitor that's compatible with HDR 10 bits color, I recommend to put your 10 bit color over there. Make sure that your full dynamic range is at full. This binder call, uh, it was saturation on the old NVIDIA control panel. And uh, it, it's a little bit better with your color. It's easier to see enemy. It's less gray. So I like to play at 55. One more parameter that I like, it's performance. Uh, I put this one at maximum at 133. You just send more wattage to your card and sometimes your boost clock will be a little bit longer. On Valorant, I'm getting a nice 5 to 7% boost in my FPS. But really important to understand here, it's all about the algorithm from NVIDIA. 
So for example, if your card is already at 85 degrees when you're playing, it will not change anything. But if you have a decent thermal and you still have space to uh, have better boost clock, uh, it, it will work and you will have more FPS with this. So this is pretty much it for Nvidia. Now let's go with Radian. So now for Radian card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver, and I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now, inside of the game. So first of all, display mode, super important. Go with full screen, better FPS, less input lag. Make sure that you have your native resolution with the proper amount of Hertz. You can lock your FPS if you want for your battery in the menu or in the background. If you have issue with thermal, sometimes it's good to lock your FPS in the menu and also when you alt tab the game. So definitely you can use that. And if you want to limit your FPS inside of the game, you can do that over there. Me, I just unlocked it because I locked it uh, with NVIDIA app. But uh, for example, if you want to lock it at 237, just put on and select the maximum FPS allowed. 
Low latency here, I recommend to go with on. Don't use on plus boost. Uh, I was getting 8 to 10 degrees more on my card. So, and also my boost clock because of that were less good. So definitely use on for this one. In the graphics section, multi-thread rendering. If you have more than four core, four physical core on your GP on your CPU, sorry, uh, make sure this one is activated. If you don't know, just Google it. Also, you can see it in your taskbar from Windows. Um, honestly, for the past four years, the majority of the, 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 the CPU on the market have more than four physical core. But just to make sure, you can Google it if you're not sure if your computer is old. For sure, if you're running a Core Duo 2, don't use that. Put this one at off. After that, I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS, but also how to have like the best visibility possible in this game. So material quality, I recommend to go with low. Texture quality, you can go with high, no impact on your FPS and uh, your texture will be more defined. So I like to do that. Detail quality, UI quality, go with low. Vignette off. V-Sync, super important to be at off. You don't want to add any input lag in your game. Anti-aliasing, I'm not a fan of anti-aliasing in this game. The game looks very blurry with it. So that's why I just use uh, no anti-aliasing. Your game will be more sharp and better FPS also. Anisotropic filtering, I recommend to use 16x and for... For all those other options over there, everything at off. I'm not a fan of improved clarity, honestly. Just use your uh, saturation uh, slider on your NVIDIA or Radeon uh, card and you should be fine. For stats, uh, you have a lot of options, honestly. Normally, if you're struggling, you're lagging and you don't understand what is going on, it's good to have some performance uh, stats like your FPS, frame time. Uh, also, look at your packet loss and your network. Just you need to make sure that are you lagging because of the server? Is it because of your internet or it's because of your com uh, your computer? So just make the difference between that, and uh, you should be fine. If you have any issue with the game, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. With the new engine, you're supposed to have like five to six percent boost in your FPS just with the new engine without changing anything else, but you don't have any graphic quality difference uh, here. Uh, you can, it's pretty much all the same option. And even inside of the game, you will not necessarily see a difference and you don't have any upscaling technique. I was uh, wondering if they will like, push something like FSR or DLSS, but it's not inevitable for now. So that's about it. Thanks to watch the video and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.